Uh, welcome to our final design video. Uh, we are group three. My name is Marijn and I'm the communication manager. Uh, I'll start with a short introduction. Uh, the project description. Uh, we were given this assignment by the EPE and the EPE is the electrical mechanics, uh, electrical, electromechanics and power electronics group. And they are developing a fully electric uh, car. And the main selling point of the car is the, is the energy efficiency. And they're developing this electric car because electric cars are believed to be the solution of uh, mobility and the future of mobility because um, the low fuel costs, the low car emissions, and uh, one of the biggest reasons is that the electricity is a renewable source and we won't run out of it, uh, unlike uh, other uh, energy sources. Uh, we are acting as consultants, uh, evaluating the car's efficiency, and we were giving a, given a one to five skill model of a Audi A4 to use uh, for experiments. Uh, we've done several experiments to make the tank to wheel analysis. Uh, these uh, experiments uh, um, are the rolling resistance test, which is a closed down test. The aerodynamic resistance test in, done in the wind tunnel and the dynamometer test. Um, with these uh, experiments and the tank to wheel analysis, we were able to uh, find optimal driving speed. And we've also done a programming part, and this programming part consists of a LED system and a full payment system. The project problem and goal. Um, is to develop and demonstrate a driving strategy for minimal energy consumption. Um, we want to find the, the best energy uh, consumption and the best uh, speed uh, for the car to drive, uh, so it uh, consumes the, so it has the best energy consum consumption. And we will do this uh, with the tank to wheel analysis. Uh, we will also find a strategy for the efficient city driving. So um, uh, how we how the best way to uh, drive at a certain circuit. And we will demonstrate this solution during the uh, energy challenge day. And we will also suggest some uh, things to the EPE, um, uh, improvements we have for the car. And uh, how can we make this car as uh, energy efficient as possible is the main problem in this project. And uh, with the experiments we will try the uh, solve this problem and make it as energy efficient as possible. Uh, our work approach, uh, we've divided the tasks in sub-teams, pe uh, three people in the programming team, two people in the rolling systems team, and two people in the aerodynamic and dynamometer team. And we had a meeting every week in which uh, we updated the rest of the team with what we've done, and uh, we uh, discussed the schedule on what we uh, should do that week. The current st status is that we the reports are finished and we've made the tank to rule analysis. The programming part is also finished and the first draft uh, of the report is uh, finished. Um, but we still have to participate in the energy challenge today. Uh, so a summary of the presentation. Um, after this, there will be tank to wheel analysis consisting of the rolling resistance, aerodynamic drag and dynamometer and the results of the tank to rule uh, analysis. And then the uh, programming of the car and uh, at the end the conclusion. So now uh, my colleague will do the rolling systems. So hi, uh, my name is Long Tom and I'm going to tell uh, the, about the results of the rolling resistance test. Uh, so I'll put a short, short summary. So we did a ghost down test at the Metaforum, where one of the persons brought, up, brought the car up to a certain speed and let it go down. And uh, for this we used different setups and we also tested, uh, we also did the test with and without the motor cochlear attached. Uh, and after the experiment we retrieved uh, data on a, on a SD card, which was sent from the RPM sensor of the car. And then uh, we analyzed the data in Excel and made figures of the data. And we also calculated the rolling resistance force and the rolling resistance coefficient. Uh, so for the calculations, we used uh, 
first made the free body diagram of the car. And uh, as you can see here, the only forces acting on the car, well, it's coasting down uh, are the road load forces in the x direction. And uh, according to second, Newton's second law, uh, the net force is equal to the mass of the car times the acceleration. And in this case, the net force the net forces are the road load forces. So the net force is equal to, as you can see, the road load force, which is equal to the road load resistance force and the aerodynamic force. If you rewrite the if you rewrite the equation for the road load resistance coefficients, then you will get this equation on the right. And uh, here we put the minus sign uh, because the car is coasting down, which means uh, the acceleration will be negative. So we, uh, uh, we inserted a minus sign such that the negative road load forces will be uh, compensated. And furthermore, we also, during calculations of the road resistance coefficients, uh, we discovered that the air track force in the car was uh, very small because the uh, frontal area of the car is uh, small and the uh, air track coefficients. So therefore, we decided to uh, neglect the uh, aer aerodynamic track force for our calculations of the coefficients. If we go further to the results, we, uh, we discovered that the most optimal setup of the car was when nothing uh, was attached on the car. That means there was spoiler and no bumper. Uh, for this setup, we got the lowest values of the deceleration, the rolling resistance force, and the rolling resistance coefficients. On the other hand, on the other hand, uh, we the highest values of the deceleration, the rolling resistance co force and the rolling resistance coefficients were achieved when only the bumper was attached on the car. And uh, furthermore, we also uh, we also tested the we also did the coast down test with the motor cockpit attached, and furthermore with nothing with no spoiler and no bumper attached on the car. And here we discovered that. Uh, the values of the deceleration, the rolling resistance force, and the rolling resistance coefficients were uh, higher than almost uh, than almost uh, other other setups where where no motor cockpit was attached. So, um, and in the end, uh, what we can conclude from from these experiments is that uh, the optimal setup of the car for uh, rolling resistance is when nothing is attached because experiments have shown that uh, between uh, the highest value and the lowest value of the rolling resistance coefficients there's a difference of 13 percent and from now on uh, my teammate will continue with the aerodynamic track force okay Hi everyone. Okay, so this is what is aerodynamics. Air drag is um, the f uh, is the force acting at the relative motion that you're going that you, the relative motion you're going through a medium, and in this case, it's going to be air because we're in a car. Now, um, when that happens, we do get a lot of energy loss, uh, so we need more energy to push through the air. Um, this is the formula we use with the force. Uh, and then the density of the air, this is the air drag coefficient, this is the frontal area of the car, and that's the velocity of the car in that moment. Then you can figure out, because we have the force, the density, the area, and the velocity, you can easily figure out the, uh, the air drag coefficient. Now, during the, our experiments, we had, to, we had four different um, modifications. So four different experiments. We had one with a real spo rear spoiler without a bumper, and then a bumper with no real spoiler, and then both of them. And then optional additions we had such as with a cardboard floor, so it covered all the holes. And 
and then uh, during the experiment, we had the wind tunnel, and uh, uh, wind tunnel, we figure out the air flow, the velocity of the car is used with the force sensor, so we can see what the force was on the car, of course, you know the air density, the frontal area of the car we calculated ourselves, and using these things with the motor fan and a nice flow of air, uh, we can uh, figure out the air drag coefficient. Um, um, we can do, we uh, did the experiments in order to find the optimal speed of the car. The, uh, so where the air drag, does, air drag uh, doesn't affect too much the driving of the vehicle. So in other words, not to have that much of uh, 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 energy loss. Um, the modifications that were that were made helped us, especially the one with the cardboard floor. And, uh, and from this, we can benefit that it, it will help us with a better uh, driving strategy. Um, and the driving strategy with the cardboard floor is the one that we, would, uh, that we are going for. Um, here we have two different results, one on this side and one on the other side. And if you pay attention to the air drag coefficient with the different tests, uh, one at different speeds, 5, 7, 9, and 12. Here we have all of them at 0 0.5, 0 0.51, 0 0.50, 0 0.53. You can see that the air drag coefficient almost is uh, at the 5 meters per second. And then in the second one, without the bumper and only the cardboard floor, uh, we find that uh, the air drag goes down between these two and the last one, but it's the most lowest with 0 0.4994 at 7 meters per second, which is pro approximately 25 kilometers an hour. So we, during this, we figure out that it's best to have the car at 25 kilometers an hour. But although we do have other uh, uh, wheel-to-tank analysis, which state that they have a different optimal speed, so we do have to adjust and find a proper optimal speed. Um, and then, um, yeah, the goals of the experiments, we've not completed them, uh, the theory has done correctly, and uh, the main result of the report is uh, according, uh, is acquiring the air drag coefficient for the different speeds, uh, which I've showed you before, the four different speeds. Furthermore, it would be used for calculations in the rolling resistance test, which would lead one step closer towards the goal of the project. And hence what I said before, that it helps other types of wheel analysis and they also will also have uh, different optimal speeds. And uh, this is to achieve an optimal driving strategy and then with the least energy consumption. That is it for the aerodynamic side. And we're gonna go with the dynamometer for Rob. Thank you. Uh, I am Rob Grunewege and I'm going to present the, uh, the dynamometer part uh, from this, ex from this uh, report. So, um, first of all, what is a dynamometer? A dynamometer is a device that can uh, measure the uh, power and torque that uh, output from a car. So basically what it does, it has, uh, it, you put the wheels on a, a rolling, uh, well, on a rolling uh, device, and uh, the device uh, meet, uh, measures the uh, power output uh, that it gets from the wheels. So it can measure the, uh, uh, how much torque it gets, and it can measure the RPM. Um, <coughs> Uh, also, this device can also simulate a real uh, life uh, situation, so you can just uh, make a program and you can uh, convert the program into the machine and, and then the machine can act, uh, accelerate and decelerate and it can give you a real life situation of what the output should be. And then we also have a power input and that was the, we calculated the volt and ampere meter to, to get a nice idea of the efficiency of the um, well, uh, we did uh, three experiments, and I will uh, uh, I will explain them later. And uh, the materials we needed for the experiment was first of all uh, the nine millimeter or the roller bench. And then we had the link and top cabinet, the current and differential probes, and software with the uh, uh, control GUI. The experimental situations: first of all, we had the uh, motor cover removed. 
in the second experiment, we had the motor connected to the battery, and uh, we, we drove. And in the third experiment, uh, we also had everything connected, but we, uh, the car was at, uh, didn't have any speed, and that was to uh, calculate the accelerator losses. And right there, we have the setup for situation one. So basically what you get is you have the uh, cock wheel, so this, uh, this wheel right there is removed, and with that we can, uh, we can measure the uh, losses from all the other cock wheels and the, and the uh, wheel itself and from the dynamometer. So uh, we uh, don't, so we, because we don't that, we, we will not take them into account because we want the efficiency from the engine and not from the complete drive line. And here you see a safety diagram about it, and you can see that uh, the dynamometer has a certain resistance and the rolling, uh, and you also have the rolling resistance losses and other losses. Then we have the uh, second experiment. Here you can see that the, uh, in this case, uh, the cock wheel is uh, modified to the electric engine. And what basically what we did is we drove at different speeds. And I will talk about later how we did that. But we drove at different, different speeds. And uh, right here we uh, measured with the dynamometer. We measured the, uh, the, uh, the rotational speed. And we measured the torque of the uh, output. And between and right here, between the battery and the motor controller, we uh, measure the input of the bat of uh, the electrical input, so we can calculate the efficiency of the engine. And uh, with this experiment, we assumed that the uh, battery had an efficiency of 100%. And then we have also a third uh, experiment. In this experiment, we uh, drove at we didn't drive at all, but the end everything was running. So uh, basically, it just was, was like uh, you're standing still for a, uh, for a crossing. Uh, and basically, what you have at this point is that the uh, mode controller will and uh, blend bars and all kinds of stuff will still have uh, have certain uh, use a certain energy. And uh, yeah, we, if we want to calculate the efficiency of the engine, we have we have to we cannot take these uh, we have to take these energy uh, these uh, energies into account. So um, that was the third experiment, and the results of this were that the, uh, were that the energy used when you're not driving was 3.32 watt. Um, so for the driving, we need uh, we use a load profile, and uh, basically what you do with this profile, you just say the S is for the distance, and the thing is you say at a certain distance uh, we uh, we change the speed and we change the force, um, and we do that so we can uh, drive for, for a certain time at a certain speed, and after that time, we it automatically change to another speed or another torque. And with that, we can uh, we can uh, um, yeah we can uh, see at a different speed and torque what the efficiency is, and we can even if we want make a real life situation with accelerating and decelerating. Um, and uh, then we have the results. To analyze the results, we use these formulas. So we have the uh, efficiency is the output power divided by the input power. And in this case, the output power is, is given by the force times the velocity, and then uh, minus the uh, other forces. But in this case, you have minus minus, so we get the plus. And that is because these forces are negative because uh, the dyno gives a force to the uh, to the car in this case because we don't have the engine attached, so the force came from the other way around. That's why this is a minus. And uh, you can see that this, uh, this uh, equation is also dependent on the velocity itself. And then we have the input power. Input power is uh, determined by uh, the voltage times the uh, current. But because we have uh, the, those auxiliary losses like the, uh, like the mode controller, we have to do, uh, subtract 3.32 watts. Um, as the, the result of this was a beautiful efficiency map, um, this map uh, basically gave, gives uh, at a certain uh, speed, in this case it's given in radians per second, and a certain torque, it gives the, uh, you can uh, read the efficiency from it. Uh, there's also a, um, a program in MATLAB where you can uh, measure it, at, where you can calculate it at a certain point. But as you can see, the uh, the maximum efficiency is around, uh, is around this point. So you can have that the least input energy will have the highest efficiency. 
and you can see that there's an ongoing line like this. Um, and we want to drive somewhere around between here and here because you will have a high efficiency and you make sure your air, air drag uh, uh, doesn't get too high because otherwise you will get a lot uh, more uh, force uh, isn't useful because the efficiency will be a little bit better but the force will be much higher so there's no advantage of it. And then we have our uh, driving strategy and the results. Now, now this is the map. Uh, this is the circuit, and basically you can see that uh, we have to uh, we stop here, then we have to drive all the way, we have to stop here 10 seconds, and then we have to drive this piece, and then we go again. Um, in, in total, we have to drive five uh, uh, five uh, laps, so that's equal, and one lap is equal to 190 meters, so the total uh, distance becomes 950 meters, and uh, with this uh, distance, we calculate the total. Uh, energy consumption we should use because you have a, a form uh, equation that uh, is v w equals f times s so the uh, total amount of work equals the force times the distance um, we took an average force of around 6 newton and we took uh, an so the total work has, uh, then gets around uh, 11 kilojoules and with this we also took the efficiency into account because the efficiency is 100% and uh, as you can see, we have to stop here for 10 seconds, but braking isn't efficient. So uh, um, we want to, uh, somewhere around here, we want to start coasting and uh, this uh, make sure we don't have to brake that much. And uh, we calculated this uh, distance for around 30 meters. And uh, with this uh, coasting, we can save uh, a lot of energy. Um, and then we go to the programming part, and that is for Marine Ten Besten. Hello, I'm Marine Investen and I'm giving you an explanation about the programming part. So basically the programming part uh, ex uh, consists of three uh, different stages. First, um, we need to do the speed measurement and then we have to output the speed uh, to the LEDs and at the end we also have to implement the toll payment system so the car can communicate with the the system uh, at the track side and at the end you have to integrate all these parts into one program and upload it to the Arduino which is also on the car. So first uh, we need to do the speed measurement because we calculated uh, the optimal speed uh, out of the three experiments and this is done by the following formula. Um, so we have the RPM divided by 60 multiplied by r, which is the view radius, multiplied by 2 pi, um, and multiplied by the gear ratio, uh, gamma. Uh, because r and gamma are constants, we just uh, measure them, we just measure the gear, the, the gear ratio and the radius of the wheel. Um, the RPM we had to uh, calculate with the RPM sensor, you see it here, um, and the cog wheel. This is connected to the shaft, and when this turn, uh, the when this cog wheel turns, uh, a, ma a magnet passes the RPM sensor and gives a signal to the to the Arduino, and then we know uh, with those signals we can calculate the RPM, uh, which is the, on which the wheels are turning, and so we can calculate the velocity. So. To get an accurate uh, speed, we use uh, make use of the interrupt function in the Arduino software, and this interrupt function uh, interrupts the the whole program when a signal from the RPM sensor is uh, received. So we can very accurately uh, calculate the the speed, and we don't miss any signals. Um, so after that, we have to uh, uh, put out the speed measurement uh, on the LEDs which are around the, the car. Those uh, LEDs are connected with uh, shift registers to the Arduino and those shift registers are connected with three pins, the clock, the data and the latch, which has to be individual, individually controlled. Um, so we did that manually. Uh, with this function. So first we make sure the latch is low 
then we uh, send a signal or high or low if the LED should be on or off. We put the clock high and low after that and that's what we do for every bit. So for every single LED we uh, do this and at the end uh, we put the LED light uh, high and low <laughs> and then the, uh, all the data is outputted to the uh, RGBs and so the, then we turn all the LEDs on. So here's a little demonstration of how our speed measurement system works. So first there's a blue part, uh, this is when, you, when the driver goes to slow and then you know you need to speed up. Uh, then there's green part when you're in optimal driving range and then there's a red part if you go too fast so the driver uh, always knows if you should speed up or slow down, just go and correct speed. Um, at the end we also had to implement the toll payment system. So first of all we needed to uh, solder the IR sensor, you see the light uh, right here, to, the, uh, to a breadboard, a PCB, um, to the, uh, the Arduino. And so we could receive the infrared signals from the toll payment system on the track side. Um, when we receive the signal, we first have to decode it to, to see if, the, if it is the right length and the, it has the right value. And if that's true, then uh, the car sends, an, sends uh, its car number, which is three for us, uh, to the track side with a radio module, which is also uh, connected to Arduino. And then the, it can be cal the lap time can be calculated. Um, and we placed it all, instead of doing it with an interrupt, we placed it in the uh, loop and I will explain later why we did that. Um, so at the end we are also, we, we had to integrate everything into one program and we also had some issues because first we were trying to use the shift out function to uh, uh, control the shift registers and to uh, output the LEDs, but that didn't work very well because the shift out function can only shift out 8 bits and you needed 96 and uh, that didn't work very well so we tried to do it manually, manually with uh, putting and putting the clock and the data high and low so it was a little more difficult to figure out but once we did it it was uh, it was <laughs> uh, it was very uh, less uh, the, the program was look better and you could better see how everything worked. Um, the second thing we had was the LEDs pulsing but we also fixed that prog problem and uh, at the end we also had the RPM and the toll payment system they were interfering because we tried to use for, for both those parts the interrupts and that didn't work so at the end we put the toll payment system uh, just in the loop and didn't use an interrupt. So at the end, um, we are finished with this project. We know all the values. Um, we did all the experiments. We uh, at the end we have an optimal uh, uh, speed and uh, we have all implemented that in the Arduino. And now we are just ready for the test day. So thank you for your attention.